Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling Review Series for the 10th of July, 1982. We continue our foray through this process uh, and ultimately um, kind of make a continued foray through that and uh, continue to do everything we can there. Not exactly a you know, a, a negative thing or a positive thing, but uh, uh, ultimately, anyway, uh, Roddy Piper comes out claiming that uh, he's been fined by the NWA. He wants $10,000 to fight and uh, to fight Jack Briscoe. He, he basically claims that he's been wronged. Um, the He takes money from uh, Crockett as well as uh, Ricky Steamboat puts up money, and everyone's putting up money for Piper to finally do battle with Briscoe. They've been battling for several months over the uh, World or the Mid-Atlantic Championship, and Piper is incensed. He's basically saying he'll only fight for this money. He feels he's been wronged. He feels the fines against him for stealing the championship are wrong. And what follows is about a 20-minute match that's super wonderful, Worth going out of your way to see. Uh, the battle between Piper and Briscoe is intense. Um, they battle over something as simple as a hip toss for a couple of minutes. And Briscoe is in control for the next little while. Um, some some basic chain wrestling. And Briscoe obviously coming out ahead there with the amateur background. However, Piper actually does better on the mat than a lot of people would anticipate. The whole angle between Briscoe and Piper and putting Briscoe's brother Jerry on uh, the shelf and all of that is phenomenal. It's great. Worth going out of your way to watch that whole angle. That's why I love this stuff. It's so much better than the flippy floppy uh, stuff that's available in wrestling today just because i mean yes they're holding on to holds for two and three minutes but at the same time if wrestling is supposed to be a simulated fight wouldn't winning matter more than how many flips you can do anyway um briscoe kind of goes into a situation where it kind of rolls through basic stuff and is holding on to piper for a good bit here Piper continues to fight his way out, but Briscoe is laying on him pretty hard, and they continue to brawl around for the next little while. Always goes back to the headlock, always goes back to uh, some double downs whenever Piper can get an advantage, and he, Piper does take cheap shots along the way. Piper holds himself like a fighter and gets frustrated when he can't get a victory, be it off a back suplex or other um, offensive maneuver. Piper is deliberate and also looks borderline psychotic with every kick and punch that he does. Lays on Briscoe for a couple of minutes and then goes to work on the leg of Briscoe as he did with Briscoe's brother in previous weeks. Both guys go toe-to-toe -to -toe and start brawling with each other. Eventually, uh, Piper gets a sleeper hold on and manages to have Briscoe fighting up from underneath with the sleeper hold for the next several minutes. Piper gets busted open somewhere along the way here, and I think it's with the head clash between the two. Rare to see blood in 1982 on a, on a, you know, on a run there, but anyway, uh, Piper continues the, the foray, and uh, he, Piper getting busted open, pretty big deal. Basically, the shots from Briscoe is what has implied to do it. However, they work the sleeper for several minutes. Uh, Piper gets back up on the back of Briscoe and manages to do everything he possibly can. Uh, Briscoe retur returns the favor and puts Piper to sleep almost. Piper barely gets to the, 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 to the ropes and uh, ultimately... Um, you know, they're, they're head-to-head... -head. Briscoe has um, Piper on Rubber Legs Street. Piper somehow manages to uh, reach down and grab a roll of quarters while the referee is distracted or uh, whatnot and uh, blast Briscoe with them. And he is, in fact, your new uh, multi-time, now mid-Atlantic heavyweight champion. Roddy Piper is beside himself because he's done everything he said he was going to do. Meanwhile, the interview with 
King Parsons basically says for that for those stakes and for that kind of money he might have done the same thing. He's pretty even as a baby face, pretty clear. The Mid Atlantic Championship means more than most things. Then we go into uh Parsons with a um match here followed up Parsons versus Slaughter. Slaughter's the US champion. So you've got the US champion and the Mid Atlantic Heavyweight Championship on the same show. Must have been a major week here. Very rare that you see that much uh competitive action, you know, back to back here. Slaughter with hip tosses, basic stuff, punch kick. Slaughter is multi time once again, US champion again after defeating Wahoo McDaniels for it. Obviously, their feud still continues. Parsons gets a couple of shots into the midsection of Slaughter. Slaughter takes his man down with a sleeper hold, and actually there is an attempted sunset flip. Slaughter cuts him off, and Slaughter is less than impressed. There is a uh, small package also by um, Parsons. Parsons is made to look competitive with Slaughter, who's your U.S. champion. Slaughter does eventually cut his man off and get a bit of a, I don't know that I'd say cheesy victory, but does manage to get the victory here. We move to the next in the series of matches, which happens to be, um, in this particular case, a squash match finally, which is Greg Valentine versus Keith Larson. Slaughter in, and basically uh, there is almost a leaping DDT side move, although it's not called a DDT at the time. Uh, Slaughter talks about being unstoppable. Also congratulates Roddy Piper on his championship win. Valentine back in the area. Keith Larson being his main opponent. Basic match here. Uh, you know, hammerlocks and, and other such. Uh, Valentine trying to establish himself as a major star back in the area where he originally started in 1979. Deep arm drags and such by Larson. Larson able to look competitive enough with uh, Valentine. Not exactly in a perfect position, but not in a uh, horrible position either. And Valentine manages to get a gut wrench and get the man over pretty aggressively, assertively in there. And... Therein you go. Valentine then manages to go pretty one-on-one -on -one with everything. And I'm uh, going to grab my phone so we'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. And pretty well as mentioned, I mean, Valentine hits, uh, you know, his basic maneuvers. Um, the the shots that he normally hits, forearms and the like. It's, it's a very basic squash match. Valentine also talks about coming back to the area. Talks about being determined, uh, wanting to get at flare a little bit, determined to get uh, at at Piper in the championship. Also mentions going up to New York in the uh, area of Boston and all that, and defeating Bob Backlund, although he doesn't want to admit it, acknowledging kind of a uh, temporary championship change. Interesting that he comes back here three years later and being a guy who has that level of influence. Anyway, um, then we go to the final match of the day. I don't know if you'd call it a standby. Young Mud and Steamboat versus Bill White and Ali Bay. Um, you know, I mean, this is a team that is back and forth, 82, 83. Um, Young Mud and Steamboat, pretty big deal here. Um, and uh, double chops, double um, team maneuvers. Young Blood, basically a more vibrant and explosive version of Steamboat. They're a really good team, worth going out of your way to see if you've never seen them before. Ali Bay, actually wrestling barefoot, which is rare at the time, misses a, uh, there. there is a miss of a um, leapfrog or a mistimed leapfrog here in the, in the midst of all this. Basic stuff, Steamboat comes back in, gets his thing, and eventually hits the cross body. There is also a uh, press slam. By Steamboat of Youngblood onto one of the you know, onto Bill White, and that will close the program. Uh, after you know an interview with uh, Jack Briscoe apologizing for his losses, and and Wahoo McDaniel saying he doesn't regret putting up the money, but uh, baby faces all gather around Briscoe and uh, support his destruction of Piper. So I mean that's kind of where we'll end for this moment. We'll be back with more right after this.